tax rapid deductions, shoot them off, and then you say it's deductible or it's not deductible. Oh, let's do this. Fellow people on the uh, that's part of the group would like to know if we're going to have it in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Monster Talks. My name is Raul Mendoza, and today's guest is a visionary. He's an entrepreneur. He's an investor. He's a public speaker. He's a licensed tax strategist with over 10. He's helped over 10,000 clients and has many ebooks and online courses. He's the creator of Tax Alchemy, the live event. Uh, welcome, Mr. Carlton Dennis. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I feel honored. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming to the event too. I'm glad we were yeah. able to kick that off. Thank you for having us, man. It was wild. Like I was telling the guys, I left super pumped, super uh, inspired. Uh, you know, it's been a it's it's been a game changer for me. Uh, I've got a lot to. I'm I'm excited to get back home and start really uh, digging into some of the stuff that I learned in my notes to yeah. start taking some action. Yeah. With some of the stuff, but I'm excited, man, and I'm I'm. I'm really excited. I'm looking forward to uh, doing another year with Tax Alchemy, All right. and uh, to come back to the event again for next year, man. I'm hope I'm hoping, and uh, I thought I'd throw this question out there because I know a lot of the other uh, fellow people on the uh, that's part of the group would like to know if we're going to have it in Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is when we uh, went out to Jamaica for Carter's event. Yeah. My wife and I got off the uh, airplane or the, yeah, the airplane and we were looking for our taxi and got into a taxi. We didn't realize that getting to the hotel that Carter's event was, was two and a half hours from the airport. Uh, so we had to go all through Jamaica, <laughs> through the barrios of Jamaica. Really? It was absolutely oh, crazy, but <laughs> it was an amazing event. It was extremely hot, extremely humid. Um, and it was, it was a crazy experience being out there in Jamaica, man, but we're probably going to keep it more inland, keep it in the United <laughs> States, maybe do Florida or Phoenix or Las Vegas. We'll see. Hey, I'm not complaining about Newport. It was beautiful. Yeah. The Lido house was beautiful, man. So everything was really good. Food was great. It was so, phenomenal. Yeah, it was I phenomenal. Really Weather well. was great, man. Like it was just a great couple of days. Uh, me and my team, we stayed uh, a block from the beach. So yeah, we were. We, we had some good time. We had a great time. I enjoy being out here in California. Man. It is. It's beautiful. Yeah, sure, we pay the state taxes, but at the end of the day, man, like, ugh, you got to pay. You got to pay to be in heaven. And I think yes, I, California is like a little heaven to me. So I love it here. Absolutely. So how long have you been doing the tax uh, alchemy uh, live Event. So Tax Alchemy was started in 2020. We didn't kick out the live events until last year, actually. So I had my first live event, Tax Alchemy Live, last, I think it was actually last May. And we did it in Los Angeles, California, and Pasadena. Had about 80 members show up. Yes. This event, we had close to 150. So it was nice. Man, I, I see it being about 1,000 people. Oh, man, it's going to continue 2000. to grow. Yeah. We're going to have an exponential gonna, I'll year. I'll grow the Lido house, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to do it uh, probably in Las Vegas. The bigger it gets, they can they can host us. Yes, definitely. And the en energy was live. Uh, just I seen everybody was excited about being here and everything. So I'm excited about what the future holds for the uh, Tax Live Alchemy, uh, the live event. So And the speakers, man, were phenomenal. Like you said, I'm going to have to go back after this weekend and kind of dive into some of the notes and screenshots yeah. that I took because there was information that I hadn't yeah. learned yet or implemented yet that I need to get on top of. That was crazy that I seen a lot of the, <laughs> the speakers actually, as soon as they got off stage, they went to the back and then they're taking notes on the next speaker. Yes. That's, that's how uh, powerful it was, man. So. And how humble the speakers are, too. I'm lucky to have a lot of those members show up for me yeah. and being willing to be a part of those events. And many of the times that I'm throwing these events, you know, I'm not even paying the speakers to show up. They're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. Yeah. And that's what I really appreciate. Yeah. Um, so do, uh, do you read books about public speaking, man? Or how did you develop these skills? Because you do really well inside of the group, outside of the group. You do really well. So... Do you have a mentor, a coach, or how did you develop those skills? Yeah, so when it comes to public speaking, no one was a bigger mentor than my mother. 
when I was younger, <clears throat> my mother actually used to have me stand in front of the mirror with her and she used to make me practice my presentations. I remember in the third grade when I built my volcano and I had to explain the entire process of how a volcano erupts, yeah. she made me practice in front of the mirror, keeping my eye gaze on my own eyes. So I got really good at knowing how to look people in the eyes at a young age and yeah. to develop my confidence to the point where when you felt like you knew a skill or something you're passionate about, you're able to communicate it effectively and really connect with the listener and see and understand their emotional connection to your words yeah absolutely i was really impressed with uh jorge's daughter catalina yes he brought her up there that was really cute man and, and uh it was unique uh, yeah and i think that's uh, powerful when you tell your kid that at four at five you know what they grow up to be uh when they have that kind of schooling so yeah that was a unique way to do the presentation he kind of set the standard now I think, uh, you know, when my child gets here, I think my child's going to need to be on stage before five. Absolutely. Yeah. The way he did that, it, it, that set, it set an example. Yeah, absolutely. It was very powerful. So how do you differentiate yourself from uh, as a tax strategist as compared to like a, an accountant? Oh, this is simple. So most accountants go to school for public accounting. Yes, they have exposure to tax law. But they're really learning a lot of skills around how to account for expenses, income, creating really professionally well done profit and loss statements or balance sheets. Whereas an enrolled agent, which is my license, we pretty much study just strict tax law on individual side, on the business side and on ethics. So I have a good understanding and many other enrolled agents have a good understanding of what things that a taxpayer can actually do in the tax code to reduce their income. Whereas many CPAs who spend a lot of time doing the accounting work and very little exposure to the tax side, mainly focus on doing public accounting work, bookkeeping, CFO like services. So I separate myself from most of the CPAs by being a tax strategist because I'm providing strategies for business owners to save them money. So when they go into their CPA's office, they can just do the compliance piece. You've changed the game, bro. I would like to say that I think so. <laughs> but we're still changing the game. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that I want to do in the tax space. I mean, <clears throat> I get motivated by Robert Kiyosaki, Tom Realwright, and their books have educated people on the power of the tax code and what you can do with the tax code. But I need to get my book on the shelves, and that's one of the things that we're going to focus on this year in 2024. But even more so, just spreading the tax knowledge even bigger and greater on YouTube. YouTube has been the number one platform for us for garnering business, but also been the number one platform for sharing education around taxes. And I can honestly say that there's more tax-free people in the world since us starting that YouTube channel. Absolutely. Yeah. And I just see, I see other people like Carter and stuff like that coming in. There's still just not enough help yet, man. I think uh, you guys are changing the game. So like you said, I think there's still new levels to this that you guys that you guys are going to achieve through this. Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> me and Carter, we always collaborate. There's no competition. We truly believe in collaboration. Over I love competition. that. I love that, man. And I love working with Carter, too, because me and him look at it like this. We're in this wave period right now, and we don't know really when this wave is going to end. But what we do know is we have to set the stage for the next person. And if we don't go as hard as we do, yeah. how do we know if another person that's you know looking up to us is going to be able to have all those tools, resources and mentorship to be able to take what we've done to the next level? Right. Absolutely. And so yeah. I want to be able to inspire the next generation. And the only way I can do that is by living out my truth and also making sure that I'm going all in on what I'm passionate about. Yeah. And this niche tax strategy just happens to be that thing that I've been able to turn into somewhat of a se sexy topic. I would yeah. hope so. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the tool that I'm going to use to build financial wealth. Yeah, definitely. Um, talk to me about the power of video and how it's had an impact on your business. Video had, has had a direct impact on business for me. Now that we track 100% of our analytics, 94% of our clientele comes in through social media. So that's the form of YouTube, TikTok, or Instagram. And yeah. I would say a majority of them coming from YouTube. If I would have never gotten on YouTube or if I would have never focused on Instagram, I can't say that I would be where I'm at here today or have the impact that I'm having today. I look at video as almost like digital real estate. Yeah. And because I'm on YouTube teaching on tax strategies, I'm trying to take up all of the digital real estate as it pertains to tax strategy, covering LLCs, S corporations, C corporations, retirement accounts, whatever it might be that pertains to tax. I want all of the real estate. So I'm going to create yeah. videos faster than any other tax professional on the internet. Yeah. You've done a great job of it, man. You've got, you've got a library of content now. Yeah. And uh, just with the stuff you're showing me, 
uh, like you were showing me over on the screen, it's just amazing how organized it is and uh, how you're how you're putting that out that content out to your uh, subscribers. So. Yeah, but it wasn't it was not always like that, man. When I got started, it was literally setting up a iPhone up against a, you know, bottle of water yeah. and shooting a video <laughs> in front of a whiteboard. <laughs> Then it came to me buying a $300 camera from Best Buy and realizing I bought the wrong camera and I had no speaker for it. So the audio was just coming in through the camera. So it sounded like I was talking to a pillow. And then I eventually upgraded and got on the phone with somebody that told me, okay, Carlton, you need to buy a microphone that goes on top of the camera and then a tripod. And then fast forward now, I have seven, eight members working on just my video team, yeah. editors, copywriters, you know, thumbnail specialist, and it is truly like a, a, a real on business. Yeah, I tell my owners these days, 90% uh, of owners are not going to get in front of the camera. So yeah. right off the bat, by you doing that, you're standing out from the crowd, you know? Yeah. So it's important that, that we do this content and we uh, create content to uh, show people that you're the expert in this space, you know? Yeah, and without a doubt, I, I feel special too, because most tax professionals, even successful tax professionals, don't want to do content because that's not part of the reason they became an accountant. Yeah. I mean, most people who go into the accounting space will tell you they're introverted instead of extroverted. Yeah. They'd rather be, you know, in the office behind the computer, yeah. not forward facing. And so I play into the advantage of the fact that I started out in sales where I had to be, you know, extroverted. And it worked really well when I started picking up tax law because I realized you kind of have to share information in order to be good at sales. People yeah. need to know what they're purchasing. So if I gave away some of the strategies, whether it's online, YouTube, yeah. Instagram, it was like selling. It was me being extroverted. And that turned around and helped grow my tax strategy company. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a game changer. And uh, what motivated you to create like these online courses, these eBooks that you're creating? What was that spark that, that uh, pushed you into that? I know you talk about uh, your neighbor uh, a lot yeah. <laughs> through stuff like that. But what was that moment? Was it through a seminar? Was it, you know, what, what was it that you were like, man, I need to start doing this? So it was two people, one, my brother, Kenneth, and then Grant Cardone. So when I started studying Grant Cardone, it was because my brother, Kenny was no longer watching Netflix with me anymore on the couch after work every single day. Yeah. So my brother, Kenny and I moved in together after I started working with, in my mother's company. I was 22 years old. He was 24, turning 25. And I knew that I wanted to go and make six figures or seven figures, but I just didn't know how it was going to happen. So I typically just worked out really hard, would come home, watch Netflix, and it became a, a pattern for me every single day. Me and Kenny would watch a new movie. I would cook food. And we never really studied anything, read any books like that. We would just show up to the gym and just do our thing and go to work. Well, Kenny slowly stopped showing up to the Netflix nights <laughs> and he started moving into his room and taking his laptop into his room. And I was like, man, I'm like losing this connection with my brother. Like, what is he in there doing? So I used to start going into his room and I would sit on the floor and watch him watch these marketing videos. And what he was watching was Russell Brunson. He was watching Ty Lopez and he was watching this guy named Sam Ovens. Yeah. And Sam Ovens created this uh, company called consulting.com where it shows you how to build a course and um, this course leads to a coaching program. And so Kenny had started learning how to build a course. Well, while he was studying marketing and how to build a course, he said, Carlton, listen, I want you to make more money, but you need to study somebody. Look at this guy, Grant Cardone on Facebook. And this was before Instagram was big, is when Grant was on Facebook. <laughs> this guy right here is, has a sales training program. I'm gonna get a sales training program for you. While I'm studying the marketing stuff to help grow mom's company, you study the sales stuff. So every single night I would get my laptop out just like he would and I stopped watching Netflix and I started studying the sales training stuff that Grant Cardone had on his program. I went through six videos a night, took notes, made flashcards. Within about three months, my sales numbers tripled. I, I, I was already making six figures now at that point in time. And I realized this is exactly what I want to do more of. Yeah. So I started building out a sales team. Well, when I started building out a sales team, I realized the only way that I'm going to continue to have lead flow coming in at the level that I want it to come in is if I'm helping out on the marketing side. Let me start doing some of the webinars with my mom and start doing some of the live calls with her. And maybe I'll start posting on Instagram. Well, when I started posting on Instagram, I ran into this guy named Charlie, which I shared with you at the event. Yeah. And Charlie helped me get onto YouTube. 
And that's when YouTube started to skyrocket and I was able to really build Legion. YouTube told me to start the course though, because in, in the videos, people are like, well, do you have a program where we can learn more from you? And it kept coming up, kept coming up underneath all my YouTube videos. So then I talked to my brother, Kenny, and he's like, bro, I took that program years ago. Remember while you're studying the sales stuff, yeah. let me give you the program. So then I started taking the program from Sam Ovens around consulting.com, how to start your own high ticket sales training program. And I built Tax Alchemy, the course, and on the back end of the course was a high ticket tax planning program, which is our inner circle. Wow. And so that all came from, you know, first, you know, getting to see Kenny transition into real entrepreneurship and studying. And then Grant Cardone um, being a mentor to me and helping me grow to six figures, eventually seven figures, and then turning around and having a YouTube channel where I listened to my audience and then was able to use some of that information that my brother gave me to then start building Tax Alchemy. Yeah. I was, I was sitting in my seat yesterday and as you got on stage, you said in 2020 when COVID hit, everybody you know, went into their place, right? They were at home. Um, and this idea came to me of this stuff. And I was just amazed of how we can go from that to what we experienced over this last weekend in three years, man. And I was just like, my mind was blown, blown away. I'm like, man, <clears throat> like if I start, if I start impact and if I start implementing some of this stuff, what can I achieve in three years? You know, so it was very inspiring. So yeah, I want to share that with you. Uh, you. What seminar had a, a huge impact on you and why? Man, I've attended a lot of seminars. I would say one of the seminars that let me know what was possible was when I went out to one of our speaker seminars, Ravi's uh, seminar. I was just at the point in time where my YouTube channel had crossed 20,000 subscribers. So I was like, okay, I'm finding success with this, but I'm not like a full blown on YouTuber yet. Yeah. And I still don't have a way to make a hundred thousand dollars a month yet. Like, how do I, how do I get that to come in consistently? <laughs> and so when I went out to Ravi's event, I got around all these other entrepreneurs that are right around the same steps as me. Some of them were just starting their YouTube channels, just starting their social media channels just trying to figure out how to build a course, just trying to figure out how to build an offer. So being able to see all of these other people in the same you know, realm as me, it kind of let me know what was possible. And then also seeing someone like Robbie on stage who had already built out all these systems and figured it out, yeah. that kind of really inspired me. So I got back home, implemented everything that he had shared with me, and that's how I got Tax Alchemy, the course also up and rolling faster. And more importantly, it was the confidence that I had while I was building the everything. Yeah. And so I would say that was a big seminar for me. Um, Tony Robbins seminar has changed my life. I would say if you haven't gone to a Tony Robbins seminar, it's just one of those bucket list items that you have to go to. It's absolutely life changing. Um, and then the unbreakable business mastermind that Grant Cardone put on last December, he invited all on or he invited all influencer influencer entrepreneurs to um, an event in San Diego on like the 40th or 50th floor of this building, gave us all breakfast, lunch, dinner, and he took us out on a yacht. But the purpose of the event was to educate us for free on how he's been able to grow and scale his companies. He had all of his head people of his company there, Brandon Dawson, Natalie Workman, all these people were there. They all had to present. And at the end of it, he wanted us to help him if it was in our heart. Um, with growing his five-day challenge and throwing a, and a, uh, selling tickets for his upcoming event, utilizing our own databases. But being around all of these other entrepreneurs that were doing 20 million a year, 40 million a year, 150 million a year, the biggest person in there was doing 350 million revenue a year. Oh, amazing. It literally changed everything for me. I realized, dude, what I thought I was doing was absolutely <laughs> nothing. The, th the information I thought I knew no longer felt as strong or, or valuable. So, but it was cool because when I went into the room, certain people noticed me and they're like, dude, I love your channel. I love what you're doing. You're going to, you're going to blow up, keep going. And I got around other people that I've looked up to and I'm like, dude, can I take five, 10 minutes of your time? Just say, thank you. Your videos help me. Um, like Tom Billy, like all those people were in this room. He had everybody in there. So that's that power of the mastermind we were yep. talking about, man. Proximity that's, is power. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Definitely. Wow. So what's the big, biggest misunderstanding that people have about uh, taxes? The biggest misunderstanding that people have about taxes is they think taxes is super complex. I'll be honest with you. 
Taxes is not complex when you understand the reason why the government first created taxes. Once you understand what the government was trying to do and that they're a business at the end of the day, all businesses are meant to profit. You'll realize why they keep taxing us and why there's specific rules that were created to help them not be abused by their own system that they created. Yeah. If you can just understand those concepts, just simple, then you can start to approach taxes in a new light and be able to start utilizing some of those concepts to your advantage to be able to help you grow in this life. Because at the end of the day, if you choose not to, if you choose to turn away, then the biggest tax that you're paying is ignorance tax. That's you, it's what you do not know. That's part, right. And yeah. so I really think that most entrepreneurs and, um, you know, most investors became entrepreneurs and investors um, because they believed in themselves. And then as you grow, you're going to make more revenue and you're going to turn around and start figuring out, well, what did the government believe in? Why did they create these laws? Why did they create these? Uh, That's a great question. Right. Like you yeah. start to believe in yourself and you're like, OK, the government had to believe in themselves, too, when they decided to make these decisions. So what were they believing in at the time? What were they yeah. trying to solve? Yeah. OK, maybe we had a war that we couldn't pay for. So they believe that the American people can help stop this war. Why did they not turn that off after the war was over? Why did they keep taking money out of your paychecks? Well, beliefs changed right after. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So anyways, I can go on for days about <laughs> it. And I geek out over this stuff because we live it. We literally live it. Yeah, we do. And, but that's powerful. Uh, asking the question. Yes. Like, why do we get taxed? Right. What are they trying to achieve? Yeah. So what has been your biggest or the latest challenge in creating <clears throat> your, your masterclass? Man, I would say the biggest thing is finding the right type of individuals, but it's not about finding the right type of individuals. It's creating the system to find the right type of individuals. One of the most important things that I did over this past year was hire the right type of COO and CMO, Chief Marketing um, of Operations and uh, Chief Operations Manager. These two people are now responsible for creating the systems that allow for me to have the great best CPAs or the great best enrolled agents come to my firm so that I don't have to constantly go and try to cherry pick people or, you know, figure out if I need to hire somebody. Okay, guys, everybody knows we need to hire somebody. It's all hands on deck now. No, we should always have people that are ready to go that are interested in wanting to work in our firm yep. and have a system to always have people that are ready to go every single month. Has that become easier now that, <clears throat> you know, you have your online presence? Uh, I, I've noticed that with us, you know, like as our online presence increases, yes. we put out a position, people want to come work for us. Yes. You know, so has that helped? Absolutely. Having a personal brand in growing in the tax and accounting space as directly correlated to people wanting to be a part of your vision. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I tell owners that all the time because I get a lot of the people don't want to work anymore. I'm like, they just don't want to work for you, mm -hmm. you know? And it could be because you're not communicating the vision uh, correctly, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of people want to work for somebody who is trying to, you know, make a difference in this life, but also can communicate the differences that they're trying to make in this life correctly yeah. so that people can get on your ship. Yeah. But if you're not, you know, shouting correctly from the top of your boat, you may not get those people to board your ship. Yeah, that that's that's a common problem. Uh, what are the two or three most common tax items that business owners work uh, you work with? uh, are that are not, they're not taking advantage of. You're not taking advantage of bookkeeping. Bookkeeping can lead to you actually being more strategic on investing. And most business owners mm. don't invest enough outside of their businesses because they don't know their numbers enough. So they'll just pour back into their businesses, yeah. which is completely fine. I think investing in your business is probably the biggest return on your, your biggest return on your investment. But sometimes we want to diversify your investments to be able to grow your net worth. And so if you're a business owner that's not taking advantage of your bookkeeping, you could be making decisions in the month of November and December without completed books. And by the time you cross over into the new year, you could end up having a higher tax rate and a higher tax bracket without even knowing. Yeah. Disqualifying yourself from many deductions and also limiting yourself from being able to use some of those tax savings to reinvest. 
But if your books are in order in the early months of the year, June, July, as you're going throughout the year, you can set budgets and you can forecast. So now we could take some of the profits out of the business, yeah. go put it into real estate or go put it into more speculative investments yeah. if you believe in that, like crypto, whatever it might be, and be able to grow your net worth and help you do some of those other things that you might have in mind as a business owner. Yeah, it's been game changing for me to organize things <coughs> into department. So I see what departments are bringing me money. I can break it down, look at the... Uh, the growth of each department I can yes. uh, or service or product that you have. Uh, I can look at uh, which ones are our big dollar items and are bringing value. You know, you can look at and use it for operations to say, hey, I need to load up more people on this end because we're, you yeah. know, we're making a lot on this end, you know, so it's been a game changer uh, to be able to. And QuickBooks has made it really easy, but there's other great softwares out there that allow you to uh, to keep those books in check. And yeah, I still run into owners that are still doing it on paper, man. It's ridiculous, bro. Yeah. You roll it. This is what surprises me the most. I'm dealing with multimillionaires that are doing their bookkeeping with just bank statements. Yeah. Like you have no software. Yeah. Like that's absolutely absurd to yeah, me. Yeah. You're how leaving you yourself open. Me, how are you telling me you're making three to 5 million a year and you haven't turned around and hired somebody to be the quarterback of your finances inside of QuickBooks for you have no bookkeeper. You're just sending your bank account transactions over to yeah. a CPA and just hoping he knows what to do when it comes to categorizing all your expenses and filing the tax returns. Yeah. I think that's absolutely dangerous as a business owner. Absolutely. It's sloppy. And I think if they were <clears throat> to have their stuff organized, maybe they'll do 15, maybe yeah. they'll do 30 million. Yep. You know, if they were organized without so, a doubt so. and it helps make your business look more, attractive to another investor who could be wanting to acquire your business. Right. Yeah. But if you don't have your finances in order, you're just talking about what you think you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're never going to have that exit if you don't have that organized. Cause it's two things you can do with a business, right? You can work it until the day you die or you can work it to sell it. Right. Yes. And if you're going to, if you look to have an exit at some point, you need to have that in line without a doubt. Yeah. And your finances are the heartbeat of your business. Your P and L statement yeah. is the heartbeat of your business without one. It's hard for a tax professional like myself to know how I can best structure entities for you or diversify money off of the tax return into other in investments to reduce your liability. I'm really tied with my hands behind my back if you don't have P&Ls that are up to date. Yeah, and I think uh, business owners, we need to learn how to read those statements yes. and understand what a P&L is, yes. how to customize those reports and keep them so you can easily access them. Um, I like Ravi's da dashboard, you know, so if you have a dashboard, uh, I think it helps us stay on task and be able to analyze. I tell people I look at my, I look at financials every single day, man. Yeah, like absolutely. at the end of the day, I'm at least tapping in five minutes just to say what happened today, what's going on, because we have thousands of dollars coming in, yep. thousands of dollars going out every single day. So it's good practices as a business owner, just yep. like you have certain practices as an employee. When you get to the office, you're doing certain things as a business owner. One of those things that you have to do is you have to put your yep. hand on your heart and listen to the pulse. Yep. And that is your finances. Yes. Open it up, crack open the laptop, click in a quick buzz, just check out the P and L statement. And if you don't know how to read it, hire a tax professional that's really educated to teach you how to read your P and L to the point where you're turning around and you can educate somebody else on it. Yes. That's how strong you need to know how to read your P and L. Yes. I'm, I'm over there uh, talking to clients about tax codes. <laughs> <laughs> you learned them over the years, man, yeah. being, being in the alchemy group. Yeah. I mean, it's hard not to. Yeah, it's hard yeah not no, to. thanks to you. Uh, how, do you re how do recent tax laws impact b the small businesses? Well, one of the big ones that I'm hoping goes through is this yeah. bipartisan tax bill. Yeah. It's a $78 billion, would it be, tax bill that um, just got passed through Congress, and right now it's sitting in Senate. So if this passes, many business owners will get to experience 100% bonus depreciation. And I can't even begin to tell you what that is going to do for business. Yeah, we I'm will excited. save more money in taxes and then be able to employ more employees and invest more into alternative investments like real estate and help solve the affordable housing problem that's currently going on in America. Not only is bonus depreciation amazing and R&D tax credits and some of the stuff for business owners, but the child refundable child tax credit is a huge benefit to everyday taxpayers. There's many low to middle income uh, households that have tons of children that they claim on their tax returns. The refund amount is going to go from $1,600 to $1,900 per child. That's a big difference when you're talking about making money back in a refund. Yeah, it's big. I heard you talking about that and uh, they, everybody was asking about that, right? Hey, Carlton, what's going to happen, right? Yeah. But, but uh, I hope it does go through. Um, uh, what are the most common things that people are audited for? 
the most common audits happen from mistakes on the return. Because the IRS has a computer system that looks over your tax returns, it is going to mark your tax return if there is a discrepancy in a category that they're used to normally seeing in certain parameters, and they're gonna mark your return if you filled in areas that you're not supposed to fill in, and then mm -hmm. things don't add up. Another discrepancy is not reporting all of your income. If you do not report all of your income, what ends up happening is if you got W-2s that came in from your employer and maybe you work for two or three, four employers, but you only reported one or two of your W-2s, mm -hmm. the IRS has already received your W-2s. And if you're not reporting all that income, they're going to flag your return to be audited by a human. Just like that tax return that came in where you, where you had categories that were missed, uh, misplaced as a business owner. These returns get moved off the conveyor belt and actually get flagged to be reviewed by a human being. Then you receive a letter in the mail from the IRS telling you have a certain amount of time to respond. With the IRS is different than with the court of law. You are guilty until proven innocent. So you need to be able to come up with substantiation or documentation in regards to why you reported whatever you reported because they're going to send you a letter saying, you owe this, here's why. Send us whatever documentation you have to say otherwise. Yeah, that's a golden nugget for you, for everyone out there. Uh, make sure that your taxes are filled out. Get a professional, man. Get a professional to do it right. So. Yeah, even I have a professional that helps file my returns because I have so many different corporations and LLCs that flow together. Yeah, it could be complex. I know that I spend more most of my time doing tax strategy. I'm just going to hire a tax professional who spends all of his time doing tax returns to just help me file that return too. Yeah. So even someone as qualified as me even has a CPA that helps look over my tax return. That's big. Yeah. Um, what was, uh, I know you're getting into investment and, uh, you know, yesterday hearing about the crypto mining stuff was mind blowing as well. Yeah. Uh, what was your first big investment? My first big investment was $6,000 that I invested into a syndication and I had only $7,000 in my bank account at the time. I was in Utah with my dad outside of a coffee shop. Um, waiting for my brother's football game to start. And I had graduated college and it was my first year outside of college, accepted a job working for Gallo Wine Company in downtown LA. And so I was just starting to build up my savings account to set like, just got it to seven grand. And I was in Grant Cardone sales training course at the time too, because Kenny was giving me the course. So <clears throat> I decided that I was going to invest as a limited partner into Grant Cardone's um, non-accredited syndication group. If you're non-accredited, that means you make less than $200,000 and you don't have a million net worth. And he was the first person to ever put out a non-accredited um, investment pool. So I was able to put in a minimum of $5,000 and be in real estate. I had always wanted to own real estate and I was starting to follow this guy and believed in multifamily investing. And I didn't want to be the guy that only put in five grand. I wanted, you know, in case I ever met Grant, I wanted to let him know like, hey, I just wanted to try it out. So I put in six grand. It was all yeah. I had. So I put in $6,000 from my savings account into the, into the syndication. And within about two to three months, I started to receive monthly cash flow checks. It was only about $25, $26. But that taught me the power of cash flow. And... Fast forward seven, eight years later, I'm like still receiving checks <laughs> because we never sold those deals. But um, it's just been nice being able to say like, hey, I have K1s going back multiple years that show real estate losses. And I was earning cash flow all the way back in 2017. Right. So yeah. um, it's been it bodes really well for my path towards how I became a real estate tax strategist. Yeah. Um, and that was my first big investment. You're really open minded when it comes to investing. Uh, yes. You know, like I go back to the crypto mining and stuff like that. I don't I didn't really know much about crypto mining. I understand, you know, what I as far as like what it is, but mm -hmm. I didn't know too much about it, like the investment <coughs> part of it. Yeah. Uh, what was one investment that you've made where you were like over your head? Like, man, I just didn't understand this well enough. Well, yeah, I mean, for sure it was crypto for, <laughs> really? for sure. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> The reason why I had to get into crypto, even though I didn't understand it, was because when you're in this space that I am in, where you look at tax returns and you see the truth, yeah, you're going to see it enough times and be like, okay, I don't even care. I don't know it. Yeah. I need to have something. Yeah. And that's what started happening. In the, in the year 2020, all of these 
young entrepreneurs, young investors, young 18 year olds, 19 year olds were getting into crypto and making millions off of these crypto and NFT projects. Yeah. And guess what? Carlton Dennis who was the young tax strategist. They felt more connection to me than, you know, a traditional CPA that might be older. So they reached out to me and I'm on the phone with some of these 18, 19 year olds that are making three, four times the amount of income I'm making off of crypto. And they're telling me, Carlton, just put $10 and put $100 and put $1,000 in. And so after you hear that over and over again, yeah. you start wanting to, you know, have some exposure to crypto. What is de decentralized finance? What does that mean? What's the difference between Bitcoin versus Ethereum versus Dogecoin? Why are we seeing all these coins popping yeah. up? And you start to kind of follow it. And the more you attract it, the more it comes to you, right? So yeah. on Instagram, the algorithm started working in my favor. And I started making bigger investments into crypto. Definitely lost lots of money in crypto, as many of us Same have. Same here, yeah. Um, but I'm glad that I did that because, one, I'm a believer in crypto and, and Bitcoin primarily. Um, but two, it allowed for me to see, um, you know, the ups and downs of the market and what it's like being in speculative investments. Yeah, it's, it's it, I definitely, I lost money as well. Uh, but I learned through that experience, man. And I think that's sometimes how you have to learn yeah. uh, by just doing it. You yeah. have to go in, man. And, and that's how you learn. Oh, man, you got to scrape your knee to know that sometimes you don't want your knee to get scraped. But yeah. at the end of the day, this is how you grow. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we learned about Bit uh, Bitcoin mining. We're talking about Bitcoin mining. How can people use Bitcoin mining to offset some of those crypto gains? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're going into Bitcoin mining, you have to realize that's an active business. So if you purchase the miners, that becomes your equipment. The yeah. IRS will allow for you to 179 bonus depreciate that equipment. Right now, before this bill gets passed, you'd be able to write off 60% of the purchase price in year one if you buy crypto miners. And then now you have exposure to crypto because the miners are you know, doing the work for you. So if you're gonna start a business, why not start crypto mining if you're interested in crypto, right? Yeah. Have exposure to it, have a business around it. And now you can take deductions based on how you're running that business. Maybe you have a home office or you're utilizing certain supplies, computers, equipment. So all of that becomes tax deductible. Yeah, it's big. Uh, I, I definitely need to dip into it a little bit more as, as well because I've got Bitcoin and I'm continuing to invest into it. And at some point, it's going to become a problem. So, <laughs> And I think after this, like right now, we're in that bull run. I'm always looking at these trends. But I think, uh, yeah, I think Bitcoin's going to go over that 60 mark soon. And uh, so I'll definitely have to be looking into doing other things like that. But it was really interesting. So I thought I'd ask you because I think uh, it's valuable to other people that are getting into Bitcoin. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we'll see some spikes here pretty soon with the halving coming up. And I mean, it's going to be a, a nice little ride if we continue to see it go where I think it's going to go. Yeah. Uh, can you share a little bit about your journey from a fitness enthusiast to a top performing strategist? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So fitness was always my number one passion. I wanted to play football professionally. So when I graduated high school, I went to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo on a football scholarship and I played cornerback. And I realized, you know, when I got to college, there's, I'm probably the smallest cornerback here. So the chances of me being able to go to the NFL started to slowly leave my mind and I started to pick yeah. up more academics yeah. as I got to college. But when I graduated college, I had developed such a insane passion for fitness that I almost thought, why not focus on trying to build a career in sales and get a job, but also keep my fitness background going and try to start personal training business. So that's what I did. I named my personal training business uh, Rambo Fitness because a lot of the guys <laughs> used to call me Rambo because I used to tie one of those little bow ties behind my head and I used to work out all the time. Um, and I just realized that Instagram was allowing for me to post videos at the time. This was early on in Instagram. So I started posting videos of you know me working out and these videos actually started to pop off a little bit. I had yeah. some people reach out, Carlton, can you create me a workout program? Can you send me your ab program? But I was never making a whole lot of money in it. I was so passionate about it and I wanted to grow it. And the only way that I thought I could grow it is if I had more time. So I quit my job working at Gallo Wine Company, which was rigorous because I had to be up at like four or five o'clock in the morning to sometimes go to work. And I worked for, for my mom. 
And with my mother's company, they clocked in at nine o'clock. So it was a little bit different. I can get to the gym, train people in the morning, get off by five o'clock, train people in the afternoon. So I thought it was a little bit more conducive to being able to grow my fitness business. Well, after about a month and a half of being in my mom's office and watching her close tax planning deals at 20 K a pop, 30,000 a pop, however much she, she onboards her own clients. I realized while I was creating these little $20 workout programs and these $200 workout programs that it would take thousands a month for me to make the same amount that she was making sometimes in one day or in one hour. So in my mind, something clicked like, dude, if you're trying to have lifestyle, which is what you like about fitness, fitness, fitness atones to your lifestyle. Why not focus on seeing if tax strategy is something you can do. And when I went into my mother's office one day, I put a recorder in her office for eight hours. It recorded all of her conversations. I took that recorder and sent it to rev.com and then they created me scripts with it. So now I was able to talk like my mom on the phone with clients. This allowed for me to develop my sales skills and coupled with the Grant Cardone training, I kind of took off. It wasn't until I ran into a client though that um, was worth a hundred million dollars and he wanted me to look over his tax returns that I realized I have no tax knowledge. And that was pretty much like the humbling moment for me. I felt so embarrassed. It felt like all the testosterone had left out of my body (laughs) that day, the way that this guy embarrassed me. So I went online that day and said, what's the highest designation that the IRS gives without you having to go out back to school to get like a degree in tax? Yeah. And it was becoming an enrolled agent. It said an enrolled agent's like the highest designation of public accounting. Um, You're able to be licensed in all 50 states, represent uh, clients in front of the IRS if they have IRS matters. And most importantly, you understand tax law and strategy. Perfect. I'm going to do this. Started studying and about seven, eight months later, I had passed all three exams and now I felt lethal. I had the sales knowledge. I knew how to communicate. And now I had the tax strategy knowledge. And that's when I decided to start pushing more content out and eventually starting YouTube. And that's what led to Tax Alchemy, the business. It's amazing. It's been a journey, man. It has. Um, It has been a journey. We were talking a little bit about morning routines and things that you're doing that are that you think like entrepreneurs need to be doing to optimize themselves. So what are some morning routines that Carlton can share yeah. that you feel are, are game changers for, for people looking to, to get into business or already in business. What are some morning routines or game changer morning routines? So for me, like I wake up and I'll take lion's mane uh, mushroom pills. So we were talking about that. For yep. me, that gives me a lot of clarity. And then I'll sit down on my mat and I'll start doing my breath work. So for me, yeah. I typically do breath work for about five to 10 minutes. I know some people can do breath work longer. But that's helped me a lot. And I would say I do that about three to four times a week. When I'm disciplined enough, I'll get into the ice bath in the morning. If I'm not disciplined enough that day, I'll get into it in the evening. But getting into the ice bath about three to four times a week has helped me as well from a mental, um, you know, strength, uh, strengthening. And more or less, I feel like it also helps me keep off fat. Because sometimes when I have those days where I'm cheating away from my actual diet, I'll eat something and I'll realize like my body is able to kind of burn it off quicker in the workout the next day when I've had an ice bath that day. And so the ice bath, I personally think allows for me to burn fat a lot. And, you know, I care a lot about my health and fitness still to this day. And I think many entrepreneurs would say that it's not just about making money. It's about, you know, the longevity of your life and what you're able to do with that money. The memories you're able to create. The memories I want to have is, is me with my family all the way later in my years, being able to walk, you know, straight line, run, jog all the way into my eighties and nineties. Right. So, um, taking care of your body is extremely important. Um, And then just getting into the Bible, man, you know, I should have led with that, but getting into the word every single morning, I have this app on my phone called pray.com. And while I'm doing my breath work, I'm listening to um, a Bible in a year. So it's like a recording of 365 days of a Bible in the year. So you're reading through Genesis, Exodus, all the way through the end of the Bible. Um, And for me, it kind of helps me really connect with the word when I actually go into the word and turn around and open the Bible. Yeah. Um, And so those are some of the things that I do to kind of set the tone for my day. It's powerful. Um, And it's it's made a world full of difference since I've implemented it. Yeah, I've noticed uh, uh, all successful people have some type of morning routine or some type of routine. Yes. uh, And that's why I ask. So... Um, I know you, uh, what are three, t- uh, of your top books or your most recommended books? And I know you can probably give me 10, but what would be your three most recommended books? 
Man, I would say number one, because of what it does for the, the, the aspiring person that's looking to go to the next level is you have to get the book rich dad, poor dad out of the way. Yeah. You, you have to understand that there's two games in this life. And if you decide to stick in the game of just listening to the system, you're yeah. going to get burned. But if you understand the game that's been created, you can play this game to your favor. And if you understand the game, you're going to start a business, you're going to invest in real estate, and you're going to enjoy doing these things because you know what you're doing, yeah. not just because it's been told to you that these are the right things to do. That book really kind of takes, you know, the 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 mirror, it cleans the mirror, your eyeballs to see what's really going on in this world. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is absolutely a book you have to read. I'd say Tax-Free Wealth being number two, only because it's one of the most simplistic books to understand the power of the tax code. Yeah. Right now we're working on Tax Alchemy's book, and I'm looking towards Tom as a mentor. How he wrote that book has really revolutionized the way people understand taxes today. Yeah. Um, and another book is Who Not How. I think as an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. as you grow, you'll realize it's not always about you know, how you're going to be able to get something done. It's about who's going to be able to help you get something done. And for me, being able to find the right implementers when I know that I'm not really an integrator, I'm more of a visionary, was absolutely everything to the growth of my company. And I can honestly say I've watched a lot of entrepreneurs fail in business because of their approach towards business. They think that they have to wear all of the hats and that everything has to go through them. And as you start to grow as an entrepreneur, you'll realize that there's other business owners that will continue to lap you because they're willing to disconnect, disconnect themselves from those traditional beliefs of entrepreneurship yeah. where you have to be the one that always makes it happen. Yeah. No, you can find amazing, amazing um, integrators in your company that can really push your ideas and your visions of your company and execute in ways in which you can't execute. And that can lead to a lot of success. Yeah, I know uh, the... Uh First of all, all of your book recommendations that you've always put up in the group and stuff, uh, I've read and they were game changers. So I, I thought I'd ask you that question. Uh, with Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when my kids were, were small, when they were little at night, I would do a nighttime kids version of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. I would tell them the story. So I recently gifted them the actual book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And my daughter was laughing. She's like, Dad, I remember you used to read this to us when we were we're small. So, uh, wow. um, yeah, I think, it, I think that's definitely, definitely one of those that you, like you said, it cleans the windows. It, it makes things clear. It opens up your vision of what you can see. Um, do you, uh, do you visualize, uh, your goals? Do you, are you, do you visualize that? Did you visualize all of this that you were creating? It's so funny because, um, I believe visualization has probably been the most powerful thing for me, mm -hmm. for me. Mm. I can't say that for every other person, but for me, visualizing the life that I wanted to have has directly led to it happening, even to the point of me visualizing meeting people. Like I told myself I was going to meet Tom real right. Yeah. I have a phone call with him next week for the very first time. Yeah. I told myself I was going to meet Grant Cardone. I met him for the very first time last year and have been integrated with his company. So visualizing things and even this life and the, some of the things that I've had, um, all glory to God has allowed for me to be able to realize what is possible on this journey and realizing that if I don't take the necessary steps, it's never going to happen. Yes. So I constantly visualize, but it's not just visualizing. It's also coupled with some affirmations. Like yes. I got to believe it's for me too, right? Absolutely. I got to believe that I'm meant to have wealth, that I'm meant to have nice cars or even, you know, family time and to take vacations that are longer than one week that are a month sometimes at a time. I had to believe that that was meant for me, right? Yes. And so the more I visualized it, the more I felt comfortable affirming it when it out loud in yeah. my life. And those things eventually became reality. It's powerful, man. I, I, I do my visualizations at night, uh, coupled with prayer as well. Yeah. Um, I, I, I want to tell you that that's the reason why we're here today as, as well, because I also, uh, I visualized this conversation before we got here. Uh, you know, I was saying, I want to interview Carlton. Wow. I'm going to ask Carlton and I would visualize it at night and I visualize this happening. So I just want to let you guys know that that, uh, it's powerful and it, it has an impact and it, there's vibrations here in this world and, it, and we send out these messages and, uh, that's what brings us together, man. So, wow. yeah. 
you visualize me saying yes. And all of this is yes, absolutely amazing, man. And I'm yes, glad sir. that you reached out uh, to do this podcast because when you reached out, you're like, dude, I, I feel like there's something I need to do. Like, let me come and film at the event. And I was like, man, you know, I would just love to just sit down and do a podcast right after this event and just hang out with someone super cool that I know that if I get on his podcast, it's not going to be me trying to be anything other than myself. And it's just going to be natural. And so I've appreciated being on this podcast and I'm glad that you brought me on. Yeah, no, thank you for doing this podcast. I know you, you were extremely busy. I know you're extremely busy guy. And so uh, thanks for just taking the time to do this, man, because it's it's meant a lot to me, uh, to the team. And I know that back in our community, uh, people hearing you and meeting you through this podcast, I think it's going to have a huge impact. So thanks for that. Of course. man. But yeah, that's the power of visualization. It's it's huge. It's real. Uh, I sit. uh, I told you I told you my routine is I sit. I listen to some Miles Davis uh, and by myself you know, with uh, dim light, I, uh, I read, I visualize, I do my prayer. It's a, it's a, it's a routine that I do every single night. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can actually get to see it. I think that was the hardest part, like actually seeing it. Cause you, when you close your eyes, you have to actually see it. Yeah. Not just think it, but you got to actually see it. Yes. you do. And, uh, you, if you can pull it together, you know, I say use things you've seen if you want to buy a building, like use buildings you've seen to visualize that yeah. to, to help you. Uh, but that's what, that's what, uh, I've been working on and it is powerful. It's game changing. It's the reason why I sit here today. Yeah. And as cheesy as it sounds, that's why vision boards are powerful too. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes people have a hard time visualizing and I want, I want more people to, to visualize, but also to be more descriptive, like you said, in yeah. visualizing yeah. all the way down to the color of the house you want, Absolutely. you know, the, the, the air that's going to be in the, in, or the, the color that's going to be on the car, the, the way that you're going to, um, you know, visualize needs to be a hundred percent in alignment with what you want to see. And most people who do visualizations now that I see are actually doing it the right way. They're actually yeah. taking time to kind of highlight all the areas of their life, not just the fancy stuff that they want to have or, you know, I want to have 4,000 doors. People are visualizing the relationships now that they want to have with their family. They're visualizing relationships that they want to have with their wives or their husbands or um, their dogs or animals or whatever it might be. And I think that's that's impactful, even yeah. even the relationship that they want to have with God, which is powerful. That That's big that you mentioned that and you mentioned prayer, man, because uh, I found myself that I was visualizing and I, my affirmations had all business affirmations. Mm. But I, I one of the big things that I was missing was my family, mm-hmm. myself, my health, my personal stuff, right. my kids. Uh, so it's one of the recent things that I've included into my affirmations is that relationship that I have yes. with my family, with my kids, with God. Uh, to, so that, uh, you know, uh, that's also something we need to visualize. Powerful. Yeah. Come on. You yeah. have to. I mean, yes, sir. <laughs> at the end of the day, I, I, I wouldn't be a complete man without my family, without my faith. Without, Absolutely. You know, my wife and my my support team. And I visualized having my my staff members, you know what I'm saying? My support players. I visualized having the ability to spend time with my family and flying my parents out to Italy. Like I visualized doing those types of vacations and trips That's awesome. and I visualized it all being at a young age. And so it almost changed my hustle knowing that I visualized it happening at a young age rather than taking That's off. crazy that you tell that you say <coughs> that, man. Cause I was telling my mom the other day, I was like, you know, when I was a kid, when you used to drive, I used to sit in the middle console yeah. and, uh, I said, I would look at the lights and think that I can control them with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. You know, but that was happening <coughs> since an early age, man. I had yeah. these things like in my heart, in my, I knew I wanted to do more. I've always been driven. Like yeah. most people say it's an overachiever, but I don't know. I, I wasn't, I, I don't, I just became very passionate about what I was doing. Yeah. And there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Man. Yeah, absolutely. I think you got to <laughs> lean into that. And, I, and there's too many times now in society where I guess that's being like, you know, frowned upon when kids are like, you know, kind of straying away from the norm or, you know, they're not directly following directions. I don't personally think, you know, at a young age, we're meant to be so, so disciplined, you know, we're meant to be creative. And, you know, I was talking curious, yeah, Yeah. curious, creative and curious. I was talking to some of the members and 
one of the members told me that his his son is uh, four years old and starting to go to basketball practice and they're doing warm ups and most of the kids do their warm ups on the court. He likes to do his warm ups on the bleachers. He's the only kid that when everybody lines up to do the sprints and stuff, he wants to go sprint the bleachers instead of sprinting on the court. And instead of him getting mad at his son, he keeps encouraging his son like, son, if you if you want to warm up over there on the bleachers. Go warm up over there on the bleachers. You don't have to warm up over there with everybody else just because yeah. they said you have to warm up with everybody else. And that meant something to me. Absolutely. Although, you know, we want to instill discipline in following directions. But at the end of the day, it's like, I also want my child to grow in the capacity that he sees fit too, yeah. right? Or she sees fit. So Some of the greatest people out there, like uh, reading Tim Grover's book, uh, you see Kobe, you see Jordan and their, you know, their preparations for the game. They had routine, man. They had their own little rituals yep. that they would do, you know? Without a doubt. And I yeah. did too, man. I go back to thinking about that now. It gave me, it's giving me chills, man. Some of the rituals I had didn't even make sense before football <laughs> games, man. Smelling salts, powders, <laughs> or, you know, being underneath the goalpost in a certain position and yep. a certain amount of feet and distance yep. from the goalpost saying my prayer. Oh, man. Um, but you it's know, all part of the affirmation. It's all part of it. Yeah. So. I know we've talked before about <coughs> AI and how it's changing. I think this is one of the big conversations that I remember about our first conversa conversation. Uh, how are you utilizing AI into the into your business today? Yeah, so I think AI is going to completely take over the tax and accounting space. It already is. And right now, there is a big push for AI to take over the compliance piece, which is the actual tax preparation process. Yeah. I do think eventually tax, taxes will be simplified enough to where it can all be done with a computer system and you won't need to have an accountant file the returns. You'll just have accountant validate the work. So AI right now is about how can accountants, or at least in the accounting space, how can accountants get ahead of AI to where they can start utilizing AI to take over the responsibilities already that they're doing so they can get on the side of validating the work the quickest. Yeah. And on top of that, because my dip, my business is different than the a traditional accounting firm, traditional accounting firm focuses on tax preparation. My accounting firm focuses on tax planning. One area that I feel like AI is going to improve in is being able to help us as tax planners be able to calculate how much we can save a client utilizing AI before a client even onboards, Amazing. before a client even pays the fee. But being able to extract all the information from a QuickBooks file or from bank accounts, whatever it might be, populate that into all the tax strategies that are in the United States tax code mm -hmm. and be able to come up with the right type of hypothesis and conclusions to formulate a tax strategy before someone even engages a accounting practice or an accounting firm. And so that's been a big focus that we're focusing on in our firm is utilizing the right AI tools uh, to be able to be on the forefront of this. I thought it was amazing last night. I was you know, we're going over questions. We usually have a meeting before podcasts to come up like what what questions do we think will be most impactful for the viewer? Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I went on to perplexity. You know, Marina mentioned perplexity, yeah. man. I was blown away the minute that I hit that button. All the articles that you have done, all the videos you had done, it was referencing everything. Wow. And it read it like listened to all your videos and and created the questions to ask and it created a lot of the questions to ask man. powerful powerful <laughs> man and it's so funny because you know i going into it i only knew about chat gpt but now you know a year later there's six or seven ai tools now that yeah. are you know flowing out just like chat gpt flows yeah. out my mouth um, that are really impactful. So it's absolutely incredible at a, how fast AI is growing and how fast it will continue to grow over just these next couple of years. It's going to be crazy. I'm excited too. Yeah, man. we're going to be on the forefront of it. What did you think about those Apple Vision uh, when they came out? <laughs> Sebastian's like, yeah, yeah. We went. We actually went. I was going to buy uh, them as soon as they dropped. Then I looked at some of the review videos, and I'm like, man, maybe I don't need it. We're we're upgrading some of our gear. So I was yeah. like, you know, I'm a, I'm gonna buy the guys some computers, but Sebastian, uh, we went over to the Apple store, we were trying them on and he was blown away. What did you think, Sebastian? They were great. I mean, the, the gestures actually work really, really well. Yeah. Surprising. It's actually based off of your eyes more than anything. Wow. It's surprising. So you look at your, your eyes are your, cur are your cursor. Yeah. And this is your click. Okay. Like, once you think about that, you can see the power of it. It's, it's Have you tried them on? I haven't tried them on yet. I want to yeah, go to the Apple store. And I think, I, think I, have a, I scheduled myself an uh, Apple appointment. Yeah. I want to go I play saw, around with them and then buy it. The one that really got me excited with Kay, was Casey Neistat's uh, video. Uh, he did a video uh, where he was walking around uh, New York 
downtown and he was just like, this is just weird, man, that I'm able to be here in Times Square and I can jump on it and I'm doing a project or I'm working on something. That's just absolutely incredible to me. But I also think like, what is those Apple Vision Pro 2s going to look like? Because wow. we already got the first, this yeah. is like, you know, the first iPhone coming out. Yeah. Like that's, that upgrade is going to be absolutely I'm excited insane. about it because they're going to take our feedback. <coughs> you know, some of the feedback is it's, it's heavy on the front. You know, it feels like something's hanging off your yeah. face. I think they're going to take that and really uh, take it to the next level, like you said. And Absolutely. I think those two, the three, the four, it's a game changer, right? It's like when the iPad came out. It's like when the watch came out with, with all this stuff. Like, it's going to start being integrated into our life. I can definitely see people walking around downtown or the beach with some goggles on. Oh, without a doubt. It's already <laughs> happening across the world. It, you're going to be do- you're going to be doing the Tax Alchemy live event. With the goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm connected, but I'm really connected. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you my slides. You know? so, uh, what advice would you give to entrepreneurs looking to optimize their tax strategies for financial growth? And I know that's there's a ton of them, but um, if you can give like you had like a minute to give them some advice, what would they be about optimizing their talk, ta- their tax strategies? Yeah. So first off, figure out if you have a tax problem or if you just need to file returns. That's the very first thing, because sometimes as you're scaling, you may think that although the money is coming in, that there's gonna be a tax issue, but the money could be going out just as equally as fast as the money coming in. So let's first make sure that you actually have a tax problem. Once we identified the fact that you have a tax problem, then we need to make sure that you're in the right tennis shoes. And what I mean by being in the right tennis shoes is typically switching an entity structure sometimes could be the biggest difference between you saving taxes versus not saving yeah. taxes. Yeah. So many people don't understand the power of switching from an LLC to an yeah. S corporation and then just taking a salary. Just doing that alone can save someone anywhere between 20, 50, hundred thousand dollars. But most entrepreneurs don't know the power of an S corp and what it's like being on payroll underneath their own companies. And some of those small details right there could just be the differences between you saving a lot of money. So I would say first, let's figure out if you have a tax problem and then let's make sure that if you're in the right tennis shoes, once you're in the right tennis shoes, let's figure out all the strategies that these tennis shoes, tennis shoes have. Because once you know how fast you can go in those tennis shoes, you're gonna wanna go faster. And that's implementing all the right strategies, home yeah. office, Augusta. And that's when you should probably go on YouTube University and figure out you know, what are the things that I could possibly do on my own and what are the things I'm gonna need to out outsource to a tax professional highly recommend carlton's uh video on t formation and oh yeah uh entity structure because that was mind-blowing for me it's probably the first time i heard about entity structure man so uh i don't come from money uh, i had to learn everything i'm the first in my family to to do a lot of the stuff so thank you it yeah. was game changing for me and uh recently just finished all my entity structure and my trust and everything so it was a game changer. How good does it feel to it, finally have everything like structured? Man, right? I can I can, re- I can rest. I feel uh, <laughs> I feel like I've, I'm a better father because I've I've been able to prepare that for my kids. Yeah. You know, so I I feel like I've done my duty. So many times I hear about it, and I, I know uh, some of the presenters were talking about this, like Bob Marley and some of these other famous people that died with no will, no. Nothing, Nothing in place, man. And then you leave it up to the courts to figure out your your future and stuff. So it's a game changer. So I would I highly think that that's that's big. And then the strategy piece, I think it's it's something we don't think we, we think about taxes in December. Right. Yeah. Or we say, you know, what? I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to think about it in January. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think in January we need to be thinking for that year, not for the previous year. Yeah. Uh, right. Because you can't do anything. But the strategy point of it, it or the tr- strategy part of it is a game changer. Yeah. Definitely. There's a difference between the top one percent and the ninety nine percent of taxpayers. The top one percent pays zero tax, zero percent in taxes almost every single year or close to it. And the reason why is because they're planning for it. And most most taxpayers are waiting until the months of January, February, March, and April to think about their taxes for the previous year when they're already being taxed in the current year. The 1% don't do that. The 1% are tax planning every single year. They know that from January 1st through December 31st, in that year, they have to figure out how to reduce their liability. And it starts when the clock drops in New York, December 31st. Yes. So if you input your tax 
professional into the game January 1st or you're Tom Brady into the football game in preseason, you are going to probably have a great outcome come postseason. Absolutely. But if you drop Tom Brady onto the football field in week six or in week 12, you may not have the desired outcome that you wanted because yeah. he wasn't with you on the team, understanding your, your plays yeah. and understanding your whole operation. And yeah. so you can't take advantage of him in the way that you would want to take advantage of him as your quarterback. Just like you can't take advantage of a tax professional like myself. If you drop me into the game after the year is already over. I think business owners need to be doing more of that planning before doing that strategizing. I use that uh, analogy every time I'm talking to business owners. I say, okay, if you're, uh, you know, Super Bowl just happened recently. I said, uh, you know, if you were the offensive or if you're the coach, you need to have strategies and you need, that's why they put the offensive coordinator to have those strategies to Absolutely. go in so they can execute that. They don't just show up and then learn on the spot. That's what you're doing with your social media. That's what you're doing with your taxes. Yeah. That's what you're doing with your, with your website and your digital, uh, planning, you know? So, um, I definitely talk, talk a lot about strategy and why it's important. So it's a game changer. So, yeah, um, <clears throat> I always relate tax strategy to uh, sports too. So I always do that. I love that. And I'm always looking at people too. Like if I say, all right, this guy, he he loves sports. So I'm going to use those analogies, you know, when I sell. So yeah. And and I'm always talking to doctors too. And so I'll relate it to, you know, the process of tax planning, similar to like the process of going to a doctor's office. Like you wouldn't just let someone just prescribe you medicine right when you walk into a doctor's yeah. office, nor do you get to just meet with a doctor right yeah. when you walk in, right? Yeah. There's a formal process. Someone wants to take your height, your weight, your blood pressure, look at your family history of heart disease. Then you sit down with the nurse, then the doctor walks in, then he prescribes you medication after he's assessed you, right? Yeah. Same thing with doing a tax plan. Like you're going to meet with a tax strategist, but you don't Im- immediately go into the meeting with him. There's going to be an intake process. They're going to get all your documents, look at all your prior returns, just like a doctor would look at your medical history. Then you get to meet with the tax strategist. They go over the plan and then prescribe you the strategy that you're looking for. And so yeah. those analogies are absolutely amazing to yeah. kind of explain it to someone. Yeah, it makes sense. And they set, you see that look on their face like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're right? Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't go into the doctor and he says, here, take these pills. And then I want to see how you react to them. And then I'll, 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 then I'll assess you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> that doesn't happen, right? You wouldn't let a doctor just give you penicillin just by putting his hand on your forehead. <laughs> You'd be like, hold on a second. You didn't run any tests. Like you didn't look at any of my stuff. It's just not how it works. Definitely. Uh, I want to do this last little segment. Uh, see if you're open to do this. Uh, this is a tax rapid deductions. It's just a rapid question. Yeah. And if I can uh, shoot them off, and then you say it's deductible or it's not deductible. Oh, let's do this. I think. I think. Uh, I've never done this. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, business dinner with clients is deductible, deductible. without a doubt. As long as you're paying for the business client, because as you should be, and you turn over the receipt and you write down who you're with and what you were discussed, you're good. Because there's five things that you need to have anytime that you're writing off a business meal. You need to have what you spent your money on, the place you spent your money on, the time that you spent your money on. Those three things are on the front of the receipt. What's not on the receipt is who you ate with and what was discussed during the business dinner meal. So if you can flip the receipt over, take, take that information down, take a picture of the front, take a picture of the back of the receipt, you just audit proof that business meal. Golden. I'm a content creator. Can I deduct the clothes I wear? Depends. Are you making money from the content that you're putting out? Because in order for you to be able to deduct the equipment, it needs to be an ordinary and necessary expense in the pursuit of income. So that one is yes and no. Only if you're able to show me that you're making money and you linked it to the pursuit of income. In any space, can I write off the, can I write off haircuts or, and or salon expenses? No, you cannot. Can I deduct gym or our personal trainer expenses? Yes, you can. Many uh, fitness uh, influencers are going to the gym and filming in the gym. They're able to deduct their gym equipment, gym expenses. Absolutely. A cold plunge. Can I write that off? No, you can't unless you're promoting the cold plunge and possibly have an affiliate link, which I do. And I was able to write off my cold plunge because I'm using it for marketing purposes that leads to sales. So it was an ordinary necessary expense for the business. An exotic car rental. Exotic to create car, content. Exotic car rentals to create content are tax deductible. You might rent out a Ferrari Lamborghini to shoot ads or get on a boat, turn around and film ads. It's no different than creating a commercial for the Super Bowl. Absolutely, you can. Artwork for my office. Can I write it off? Artwork for your office is tax deductible as long as it's within reason. 
streaming service for my office. If you need to download a streaming service to entertain your guests who might be coming to wait in your office, waiting for an appointment with you, whether it's Netflix or Amazon or Apple TV, absolutely, it's deductible. Uh, giveaways on social media, can I write it off? Giveaways are not deductible because you're not able to give gifts in excess of $25. Are you able to deduct marketing expenses? You are, and how you choose to categorize the giveaways can be in a form of marketing, depending on how you structure it, and then you're able to deduct the expense associated with the marketing. Amazing, man. Carlton, I appreciate you sharing your insight with me, man. This has been great. We're about the, we're at the hour mark, uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to do this podcast today, man. It's Absolutely. been very insightful. There's some golden nuggets in this podcast, so I hope you guys uh, go back and look at it. And uh, if you haven't heard of Carlton, man, you really need to check out his stuff. You need to check out the tax uh, alchemy program that he has. Check out his YouTube. Go follow him on YouTube, Instagram. Uh, you're a game changer, man. I appreciate you doing this stuff, man. Uh, you've been an inspiration to me and, uh, you've always been really good to me. So I really appreciate your help, man. bro. Thank you for bringing me onto this podcast. It's absolutely amazing. I can't even be believe it's been an hour and watching you grow as an entrepreneur and seeing your business double already in this short period of time. I'm excited to see where you're going to be a year from now, man. So thank you for bringing me on. And when we do this again, I can only imagine where you're going to be at that. Hey, time. man. Yeah, we definitely have to run it back in the future. So thanks again, man. That that concludes the episode, guys. So uh, make sure you guys subscribe, drop a comment and we'll see you guys on the next one.